Hello everybody, welcome to Miharu Fukushima. That in front of you is what many consider to be the, the most beautiful tree in Japan, maybe even the world. It is a sakura tree, it is a, a waterfall variety, water, uh, taki zakura is what they call it, and it's over a thousand years old. How you doing everybody? I drove here last night. It took about three and a half hours to drive here from Tokyo. Uh, I slept in the parking lot. It was zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was not a very pleasant stay in the car, but it was so worth it. I got up at 5.30 in the morning, uh, walked around here and there were already about 20 people uh, getting ready for the, the, uh, the, sh the, the uh, festival, I guess you could call it that. Uh, I've already walked around it a dozen times. I just interviewed Ishiguro-san, who is a, a local resident here, uh, who came here with his grandfather. It hasn't really changed that much over the years. And uh, over the course of the next 15 minutes or so, maybe even 30, as I take you around this area, I, I can show you some of the history and the things that I've learned just in the last couple of hours. Um, this is actually a lot of people. This is actually a lot of people for this area of Japan, we're really countryside. It's not too far away from the, the city of Kodiyama. Um, I, I don't know if any of you have been to Kodiyama before. Let me see here. There it is. This is Kodiyama uh, next to it, near Fukushima City, not too far away. I'm the blue dot in there. And here's uh, Kodiyama City, which is which is the biggest city nearby. It's not too far away. There's a link in the description if you want to go check that out. So let's go down there and get a closer look at this beautiful tree. But I have to tell you, I think this might be the most beautiful spot we started off at. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Maybe less clouds, but there's a beautiful blue sky. And that's really good because it gives great contrast. A lot of professional photographers here. A lot of uh, media was here earlier. But I have to tell you, I can see why many consider this to be the most beautiful tree in Japan. It's one of the great, the great five trees of Japan. Every, there's like so many rankings in Japan. One of the great five trees and one of the, the uh, great uh, three top cherry blossom trees ranked wise, but when it comes down to popular vote, this one wins over and over again. Maybe it's the shape of it. What do you guys think? Just take a look at it. I'm, I'm going to stop here for, you know, 30 seconds or so, but maybe it's the shape of it, the color of it, the wisping white of it. Now, Ishiguro-san, who I, I interviewed, told me that I was too late. I can't believe, he said it was more beautiful maybe about four or five days ago when the buds are there and it has a pink color to it. Now it's all white because we're at Mankai, which is fully bloomed. But before that, uh, there's some pink buds on there and that, that makes it even look even more beautiful, he said. I can't even imagine. I'm pretty happy with what I see in front of me. It gives me another reason to come back. Around here are these, these yellow flowers, which give it also some amazing color. So if you're shooting with color film, <laughs> this, that's gonna be a gonna make a pretty good picture. In fact, this is gonna be the postcard for this month. So if you wanna get a postcard of this, join the Patreon postcard club and I will be happy to send one to you. Also supports the channel. I got some great shots from up there. All right, we're just gonna walk around here and uh, get a feeling from close up. But I think that you really feel the tree from afar. Wow, let's zoom in and take a look at it.
the sun is blocked, uh, blocked the, sorry, the clouds have blocked some of the direct sunlight. So you, that might be better. You get a more natural uh, look at the white without the shadows right now. But the sun will be back. It's supposed to cloud up even more over the next few hours. So I'm, I'm, the last few hours I've been really doing my best to film as much as I possibly can. It is unique, isn't it? For the last um, for the last couple of weeks, I've been showing you cherry blossoms around the city of Tokyo. The reason why you leave Tokyo is for this, because it's just so much better. It really is. Let's see if we can find some other other angles to film at. It's not easy to walk backwards. <laughs> That's a, this is a pretty nice angle too. It's hard to say which one is the best, but I see tree as, as a form of art. It really is beautiful. So you have to look around to find the best angles to look at it from because it gives you a different feeling from each one, each angle you look at it. Up there, there's a, there's a uh, shrine and they planted some other trees. And I'm gonna show you at the end of this live stream what it looked like back in the Taisho era. Over a hundred years ago, there's a picture with samurai. Well, there's no, there was no longer samurai, but um, they look like samurai. <laughs> it's true. walking up the hill to get another view from behind. Wow, the, you can't smell what I smell because we don't have smell vision yet, but it is so floral right now. And if, if my hay fever was as bad as some of the other people's, I'd be suffering. That's how beautiful it smells. It, it almost hurts the pollen, but It's like a very it's like acidic floral smell right now. Yeah, like uh, like it almost stings a little bit. There's so much pollen, but it's a pleasant smell <laughs> despite the stinging. All right, let's go up this hill a little bit more. I left my bag and camera equipment at the bathroom there, so I don't think anyone's gonna take it, but fingers crossed. There's tracking devices all in there too. So if you do take it, I'll find you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is why you leave Tokyo. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. It looks different now than it did this morning because the sun is more overhead. The shadow, the lighting is different. Now in 2005, snow had broken some of the branches on the very top there. It was just too heavy and it caused some damage to the Sakura tree. And uh, you, it, it, didn't, it didn't, you know, 
kill the tree or anything like that, but it it's just something because this is a national treasure. It was de declared a national treasure in 1922, which is like early Showa period, like Showa 10 or something. It's like a really long time ago. I believe that's a Showa period, wasn't it? I don't know. It was really early in the Showa period or very late in the Taisho era, I forget. But you can see from up here, it's just a really, really pretty sight. I don't think it gets any better the higher up you go. I think this is the best you get. Look at that. Oh man, I can soak this up. I don't want to go home. I let her have the railing. I was too close. It's nice to see some, some younger people here because everybody this morning was over the age of 60. I felt like I was the youngest person here, which was nice. <laughs> Not anymore. We have some kids here, which is good. Now, if you're coming to visit this, a little bit on tourist attraction here, Miharu, there's not a lot of attraction, really. This is pretty much it. And even in the summer, winter, fall, this tree looks really beautiful. Maybe that's for why this is the number one tree in Japan. But, um, and you really do, you really should come here by car, but there are rail connections and buses and stuff. I'll try to put the link in the description, but I think a lot of other websites have already done that for you. The best is, is of course, by rent a car to get out here. Um, but if you're coming here during the Sakura season, it is a Sakura tree, so this is gonna be the peak season. Be prepared to, to line up on the weekends because he said that the traffic was going all the way up this street. And this town is not made to, to accommodate so many people, thank goodness, I guess in a way that there is a decreasing population in Japan. It's not gonna get any worse with the, the car traffic unless uh, foreign tourists come with rental cars like myself. We have a, such a beautiful day. We're, at a, we're on a slope right now. From this angle, you can really see the trunk of the tree. It's massive but you can see it's also growing out of an angle, which is pretty awesome. I think maybe that's what gives it a more impressive sweeping, like a waterfall look to it because of the angle that it's, it's coming out at. But what makes this really beautiful, I, to me, and what, what, after I've been looking at it for a few hours, is the shape of it. No matter what direction you look at it from, it's just, it's different and it's stunning and it's full, no matter which direction you look at it from. Usually if, it, if the sunlight is this way, then you know the trees would be growing more into this direction, but it, it, it gets sunlight pretty well everywhere around. So the shape of it is just, it's just stunning. And I love that the dark bark of the Sakura trees, the ume blossoms, the plum blossoms are even darker, but there's something really special about um, the white petals from the blossoms and the dark bark of the Sakura trees contrast and you need the blue skies cloudy just doesn't do it because it matches too much with the white blossoms but he said uh, Ishiguro-san told me just a um, when it was about 70 percent just a, a few days ago there was a purple to it and that purpleness is uh, gives it a, a very unique color <laughs> Uh, there's also some street food around here, which you can uh, um, get lunch, support some local businesses here. One of the things that I also learned was that a long time ago, there weren't a lot, there wasn't any kind of this beautification of the area. It was very, very simple. And over the years, this site changed, thankfully, for the local area. And it brings in a lot of people. At its peak, 
it brought in about 300,000 people to this small little town um, during the cherry blossom season at its peak. But over the, after the uh, great Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, it was down to like 12,000 or something. And then now it's up to about 60,000 over the pandemic, which is a far cry, like one fifth of it. And most of the people coming here are domestic tourists. It's not a real big uh, like international tourism spot. I think it's because it's just too hard to get here. You really have to make an investment to come out to see a tree. And how many people do that? How many people invest a day just to come to see a tree? I, I, I would, because that's my job. Tree lover. Wow. All right, I want to show you a picture. This is from the Taisho era of what it looked like back then. And I can't tell the difference between a hundred years ago and now. And I guess after a tree, after a tree grows, <laughs> I guess you're looking at, we, we don't know the exact age of the tree, but if you're looking at it from a hundred years ago, it really doesn't look like it changed much at all, does, does it? Here you have the guys uh, in, in uh, kimono some of them are wearing more Western clothing, which is a sign of the time. The Taisho era was this really weird time in, in Japan where before the um, uh, Japan got very nationalistic, you had a very mix of, of styles there, which is kind of cool. And uh, the tree looks pretty much the same. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pan over here. There's a photo of it. It looks, I mean, I can't tell the difference too much. Maybe the angle is just slightly different, but then you, you see the real tree right there. Wow. Any questions? Maybe not. <laughs> well, there you go. This is the uh, uh, Miharu Takizakura. Uh, always voted, I wouldn't say always, but it's, it's, most people consider this to be the most beautiful tree in Japan. I think it is stunning. Um, I've just been here for a few hours and also I already think that I've never seen anything like it. The way they've encircled it, the way that they have paths around it, the way that they've like groomed the landscape around it, it's just really stunning. It's something you could look at Google Maps, come down in, or Google Earth, and you're pretty impressed just by something that's so natural. And it is a very wide tree. I think it's a, I think they said it was 12 meters high or something like that, and, and, and 16 meters wide, it's, which is quite, quite large, quite, quite high. And I think that it's that perfect symmetry. It's almost oval shaped, isn't it? I asked about that too. Were there other trees in the area? And there were, and I said to, I asked uh, um, Ishiguro-san, the, uh, the local resident here, what, what was, did they know that this was a special tree? Like like many, many years ago during his grandfather's era. And he says, yeah, it's always been a very famous tree here in the area as far as his family can remember. Um, there are some trees up here. There are younger trees, of course. This is the grandfather of them all. Uh, Fukushima, I think has got even, got even other really old ancient trees, I guess we can call this. There's one that's aged to be 1800 years old in Yamanashi which I might go check out tomorrow. This is part of a, of a main channel episode that I'm filming right now, and I'm not sure how, how good it's gonna be, but that'll be in 4K. Maybe this might end up being more popular. I don't know, but. For me, I think it's just special to share this with you live, so then when you do see that um, main channel episode, this is gonna be pretty special. This is in Fukushima Prefecture. I drove up along the coast uh, to Iwaki, and then I took the highway over towards Kodiyama. This is where I am right now. The blue spot marks the spot. <laughs> and there's a map in, there's a link in the description 
to this very spot so you can come here too. And if you're in Japan for the next couple of days, it's going to be really beautiful. The, the blossoms, they're full bloom starting just uh, a couple days ago, so it's going to hang on here for a while. We have some decent weather. It might rain in a, in a few days, but I think if you're here, if you come here uh, today, tomorrow, the next day, you'll be treated with something really spectacular. Uh, the picture of the year, maybe. I, I wish I could bring Kanai and Leo and we would take our, our New Year's card with this, maybe next year. All right, I'll try to go live again and bring you another really uh, a special area if, if I do, but I'm going back around 6.30 tonight. Uh, I got to get the illuminations. What does this look like at night? They light it up and a lot of people come for that. And since it is at full bloom, I expect it to be crowded. So I'm not going to have many chances to leave the parking lot and then come back because I don't, it's, it's hard to get a parking spot here. But uh, maybe that's a reason to take public transportation. I don't know. But I'm going to go look at the manhole cover next because the manhole cover is of this tree. How cool is that? When you have, you look down on the street and you see the tree in art, manhole art. That's what it's all about, baby. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Leave me a question if you have it in the comments below. Definitely hit that like button and subscribe because we're very close to 300,000 subscribers and I'll take you in another place tomorrow or maybe later today, I'm not sure. Definitely tomorrow because we're planning to go to Yamanashi depending on the weather. I'll see you then.